Now, often when discussing buoyancy, you'll see buoyancy discussed completely regarding water. And uh, we do that in some of these videos, but please realize that the buoyant force isn't always the density of water times the density of water displaced. If you have an object that is floating in oil or an object that is floating in some other material, maybe a molten metal or something like that, it's the volume of whatever fluid that object is floating in that will be used for your buoyancy formula. Now there's a reason we revert back to water for most buoyancy discussions, and that's because buoyancy was first established when discussing water. And that is what led to a quality known as the specific gravity. The specific gravity is essentially a measure of how dense any object or material is compared to the density of water. And that's a very, very important factor to consider. Specific gravity re refers exactly to how an object behaves when it's floating in water and not other materials. Now, when you are in water, there's a very unique thing that specific gravity can do, and that is that it can show you the volume submerged over the volume of the object in total. And there's a reason for that, and we can provide a proof for this, and uh, it is based on what the definitions are of these gravitational force and what the definition is of specific gravity. So in order to understand this relationship, why the specific gravity, which is at its root a ratio of densities, can also be used as a ratio of the amount of the object that is submerged versus the volume of the object in total, we have to understand that a floating object is a system in equilibrium, which means that the upward force is the same as the downward force. And so a floating object at rest has two forces on it. It has the gravitational force pushing down and the buoyant force from all this displaced water that is serving to help support this object. When you set the buoyant force equal to the gravitational force of the object, essentially what you're doing here is you're using the buoyant force formula, the density of water or whatever fluid, uh, times the volume of that water or fluid displaced times gravity and instead of having force of gravity be mg instead we're using the density of the object times the volume of the object times g. This works because remember that the density of the object is its mass divided by its volume. So this is the mg formula written in a different way. Now let's say for example that this object is made of some material that has half the density of water. That means its specific gravity is going to be 0.5. It's going to be half compared to the density of water. Now let's just assume for, for simplifying these calculations that the volume of the, this object might be one cubic meter. I think that's a, a good number to use and then we can understand why specific gravity can be used to understand these volume relationships. So if the density of water is one and the density of this object is going to be 0.5 because it has half the specific gravity of water. Remember that uh, because gravity is conserved, what we know needs to be true in order for these two sides to be equal is that uh, we spoke earlier about how this is one, the volume of our object is one cubic meter. Let's just write those units in just for the sake of simplicity. In order for these two things to equal each other, the volume of water displaced has to be 0.5 cubic meters. That's the only way that you can balance both sides of this equation, given that gravity, the gravitational constant of 9.8 or 10, no matter what you want to use, Given that g is constant in both of these, and given that we know the ratio of densities, we have to make sure that we displace only enough water so that these two forces are equal. Remember that the volume of water displaced is going to be exactly equal to the volume of the object that is submerged, because the object being submerged is the only thing that displaces that object. Once we realize this relationship, that the relationship of densities has to be opposite the relationship of the two volumes in this, then we can understand why whenever you're dealing with water, 
you can use specific gravity as a stand-in for the ratio of how much of the object is submerged compared to the volume of the object as a whole. That's why this makes sense, but remember that the specific gravity to volume ratio only applies in water because water is the root of what you use to calculate specific gravities. Once you understand that, then you're good, but luckily for you, a lot of the buoyancy questions you'll see on the MCAT will be based in water, and so this can be a very useful relationship to go from specific gravity to these volume ratios, and you're pretty much set there as long as you understand that these are two forces in equilibrium and you're just tweaking these different variables to ensure that the, the equation here remains completely true. The last thing to realize is that this simplification only works if an object has a specific gravity of less than one. Because only when you're at a specific gravity of less than one or right around one will an object float at all. If the specific gravity is greater than one, which means that it's more dense than the water surrounding it, then the object will sink and you cannot simplify using these two mechanisms. But most of the time, most objects you encounter will be less dense than water, and you'll be able to use this simplification and to set these two forces in equilibrium. And if you can do that, then you should be good.